Greetings and welcome to this mini lecture on how do we explore popular culture. Uh, in this part of a larger series called What is Popular Culture for a course on popular culture in the US. Uh, so how do we explore popular culture? This mini lecture won't give you the gritty details per se, I mean that's really what the course is about, but it'll start to give you an understanding of how a popular culture scholar might try to tackle a subject. So what we have to do is kind of do several different things in, in order to explore popular culture. Um, and really one of the things to understand is that a popular culture scholar is sometimes going to decide who decides what popular culture means to the audience. And this is challenging because on one level each individual makes their own meaning. And I think this is one of the things that popular culture has been trying to trace out in full is that you know, as we engage in different works of popular culture, we each have individualized experiences. Uh, and that's not always valued or recognized, or that's often devalued. That somebody who is so emotionally moved by, say, the, the series Twilight, uh, is considered not as valuable as somebody who has been moved by Hamlet. Uh, so there's this, you know, th there's first this this recognition that there is value in the experiences of people that engage in popular culture, and then there's this this second challenge in which, you know, scholars are going to try to talk about the audience as a whole and kind of what this means or the possibility of meanings uh, this could have for the audience, and that can be a little challenging. So the first thing that has to happen is, is of course, individuals engage in popular culture in numerous ways. And the pop culture scholar is going to look at a specific type of engagement in popular culture by a group, uh, by some audience. And so that can include a variety of things such as, you know, people that are fans of a ter certain type of movie, people that are, uh, that engage in a very popular website, say Facebook. It really is a matter of, you know, the scholar identifying where he or she wants to stake a flag and investigate that arena. So the first thing, or I shouldn't say the first thing, these aren't necessarily in order, but these are things that popular sc uh, culture scholars are going to do. Um, and one of the things is to determine which disciplines to explore this piece of popular culture through. So do they want to use history or sociology or, or literature or economics, geography? Uh, there's a variety of other things, you know, cultural studies is obviously a big one. Uh, what other disciplines is it worth using in order to understand this? Because that's going to really, in, really inform the next pieces or the other pieces of the puzzle. So uh, the scholar also looks to connect popular culture products um, or ideas or arenas with larger overlapping, reoccurring, multiple engaging themes. Now that's a very long uh, description there, the, the larger, larger overlap, etc. But those themes are going to be connected to the individual disciplines, um, or at least that you're going to use those themes and disciplines hand in hand to try to make sense of something. Uh, and in this case, you know, what we mean by themes is just, you know, we're looking at different lenses. So if you are looking at a particular popular culture piece, uh, you're looking at something, you know, you're looking at, say, movies. Um, and you want to apply a theme, you want to think about well, what are themes available within these different uh, disciplines that I'm studying. So if you're looking at history or economics, you know, you might start to look at it through a Marxist theoretical frame or a look for Marxist themes within the work or you might look for capitalist themes throughout the work or you might look for um, elitist ideas. Um, so the, the, you're really looking at whatever the, the object is and trying to connect it with, with what are reoccurring themes um, through the different disciplines. And then 
the other piece that that scholars are likely to do or should be doing is analyze the connections motivations and experiences related to popular culture um, so you can think about this as how do the various players interact and whenever you have something going on in popular culture you have numerous we'll call them players or numerous people with different roles uh, you know if you're talking about a very popular movie you have the audience which is you know one population but then you also have the creators which is another population. You have the people that run the theaters, which is another population. You have the cultural critics that are saying this is the best movie or this is the worst movie ever to come out. Um, so there's all these different people and these different people have different motivations and they relate to one another differently and they're looking at the same popular culture product differently. You know, what the fans are anticipating is going to be different. And even within the fans, it's going to be different. Some are going to absolutely love it. Some are going to say it's an abomination. So you have that variation, but then you also have a variation of experiences of the different groups. And one thing to remember is that as the popular culture scholar studies all of this and writes down or, or produces his or her ideas, um, that these are their interpretations, their analytical or academic interpretations, which we give value to, but they're always contextual to time and place. And what I mean by that is because those scholars are subject to or embedded in popular culture, there's always going to be some element of subjectivity in what they produce. And that subjectivity is always up for study later on by other popular culture scholars. Uh, it's easy, you know, or, or I shouldn't say it's easy, it's, it's, you end up, you see it a lot where a scholar will look at a previous scholar uh, who, you know, lived 50 years earlier and talked a lot about a certain subject, and the contemporary scholar will be able to critique the bias of the subjectivity of that scholar given who or what he or she was in that context. Um, so there, there, there's also an awareness that whatever is produced by a popular scholar, and this is really true of any scholar in any discipline, is that we're subject to our contemporary surroundings, our time and place. Um, and so that means somebody who has, who's living 50 years from now and has hindsight of what's gone on in the, during this time better than maybe the person immersed might be able to make better connections about why that scholar uh, saw things in a certain way or didn't. So that's kind of how popular scholars approach it, but three questions that are often at the center of studying popular culture by scholars and just fans alike are who or what determines, makes, creates popular culture. And we'll talk about this a lot in this course uh, because there's different answers to this depending on where you believe the the locus of authority, the locus of power is. Um, and sometimes that can even change within certain populations or within certain arenas of popular culture. It may be held by one group but then all of a sudden held by another uh, for different reasons. How does commercialization and industrialization, particularly the development in, in dynamics of technology influence popular culture. Uh, one of the things we'll talk about right off the bat is that popular culture is a product of the last, depending on who you side with, you know, five, three to five hundred years. Um, it is not something that's been around for millennia. It's something that has come very recent in our in our history as civilization, and so. A role, many roles that that influence that have been commercialization and industrialization, and the rise of of uh, mass technology. That is technology that can mass produce things. And then finally, what purpose does popular culture serve to the creators, consumers, and others involved in the dialogue around popular culture? Uh, so this is again, you know. So often, popular culture is devalued and tossed aside and said, ah, that's stupid, that's irrelevant. But if many people are engaging in it, uh, it, it really is important to understand the purpose um, of the different people involved. Who, you know, the people who create it, the people who engage or consume it, um, and other people that are involved in that dialogue. Because it's not just consumers and creators. Uh, there's lots of other people involved in that that we'll take a look at. And so thinking about what their purpose is, what their motivation is, what they want out of this dialogue or this engagement between 
um, the different people involved. So that's you know a basic breakdown of, of you know what why or, or how how to study popular culture that we'll be further exploring throughout the rest of the semester. All right, thank you very much, and see you in the next lecture.